Well, hey, friends, welcome back to the podcast. This is Jennifer Allwood. This is podcast episode number 175, where we're going to talk about the difference between a business coach and a business consultant. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to it. I consider myself a business coach. Um, and my coaching group is about to open, but I often find myself doing some consulting in addition to the coaching. And I get a lot of questions from people because some business owners, they're just, they're not sure what it is exactly that they need. And there's very distinct differences between a coach and a consultant. So I thought it'd be fun to do a podcast episode on the differences in the two and what you possibly need for your business. And um, we're going to go from there. It's going to be fun. And for some reason, I'm in a singing mood today. I feel like singing. So I'm going to let you know up front. Because uh, sometimes it just happens. And it's so funny. Like Ari, our little girl that, you know, we're in the process of adopting. Sometimes her and I will just sing to each other. Like just normal songs or just normal words. Just normal, you know, conversation. Everything's funner when you sing. Let me just say that. Everything's just funner when you sing. Also, I just realized my podcast mic was not even close to my mouth. And that's a, uh, that's a, that's a rookie, a rookie move right there. Party foul. How do you get to 2 million downloads and forget to pull the mic up to your face? Zeke, I apologize, but yet here we are. So we're going to talk about the difference between a business coach and a business consultant. And I wanted to let you know right off the bat, I have two other podcast episodes that are along a similar um, topic. So you could go listen to episode number 82, which is why every business owner needs to have a coach. Let me say that again. Episode 82, why every business owner needs to have a coach. And can I just give you one of the reasons why? Because we all have blind spot, you guys. We all have blind spots that that we can't see because they're ours. You know what I mean? And so many times when I've worked with a coach, they'll tell me something. I'll be like, how could I not see that? Like, what? Like, duh, now that you've told me, like, it's so obvious. And that's what a coach can really help you do. Every business owner needs to be working with a coach. Um, episode number 131 was on how to pick a business coach. And, um, you know, I have some, some things that I, um, I will remind you of that I think is important when looking for a coach at the end of this episode. But those are two other episodes that are kind of semi-related. But on this episode, we're going to focus on the difference between a coach and a consultant, or you can call it a strategist. They're big words, guys. They're big words. So, all right. So let's talk about this. All right. So first of all, I consider myself a business coach who often, you know, does some consulting. A lot of consultants off, often do coaching. So there's a lot of crossover. Let me say that. Years ago, it used to be much more defined. I do coaching. I do consulting. Now it's kind of, you know, everybody's doing all of the things. Um, and I've seen, you know, that it's interesting there are so many people calling themselves coaches anymore. There's coaches in every industry. There's coaches doing all sorts of things. There's uh, people who are con calling themselves coaches and they're just literally like going to a coaching, you know, session and then they're coaching their group on what they just learned from their own coach. And so, you know, the coaching field has gotten a little bit weird in that way, if I can be real honest. Um, I have been coaching for five years next month. And so I've got a little bit, you know, I've got a little bit of time under my belt. And it's interesting how coaching has really kind of changed and evolved in the last five years. Um, and also really kind of cool how it stayed the same. And I still believe every business person still needs a business coach. But let's talk about the differences between a coach and a consultant. Okay, so if you are thinking that you need to get one of these two things, I encourage you just to grab a piece of paper and a pen and write these things down because I'm literally going to like do this is a coach, this is a consultant. And I think this is going to be really helpful. Okay. All right. So a coach, which is what I consider myself, they're going to be someone who helps you find your own answer. I love helping people find their own answer. I love leading them to their own answer versus a consultant who already has an answer. Okay. It's two totally different things. Let me give you an example. Um, Jen, I'm thinking of, um, you know, starting a paid monthly group. What do you think about that? A coach is going to say, well, um, I have lots of thoughts about that. Like, tell me what you think about that. A consultant is going to instantly pull out a calculator and, um, and they're going to pull out some, uh, some strategy. They're going to analyze some numbers. They're going to see if it's scalable. A consultant's going to do like that. A coach is going to like, ask more questions. They're going to try to help you to get to your own answer. They don't have like a prescription 
this is the way you do it, A, B, and C. See, there's a lot of people who are coaching right now who are giving you the this is the way to success model and they're laying it out steps one through 10. And the truth is, I just don't know any businesses that operate all the same. Like I can give you the one through 10 steps, but every business is so different that that's not going to, it's not going to be of the most service to you. Does that make sense? And so a coach is not going to give you the one through 10. A coach is going to help you to determine what is best for you. What are you trying to build? Why are you trying to build it that way? What, what matters to you? What brings you a lot of joy? Um, what do you need from your business? What does your business need from you? How do you want this to fit into your personal life? Like it, it's when you, when you talk about coaching, it's just different. It's just, it's just a lot different. So um, a coach is really going to help you to find your own answer. The consultant's going to already have the answer. By the way, I have a coach and I have a consultant. <laughs> I have both. Um, a coach is going to work really hard to bring out the best in you. They are going to really help you to see what your sweet secret sauces are. A consultant's going to help you like with strategy, but a coach is going to bring out of you like the things that they see. See, um, <laughs> did I say see, see? So like today, for instance, I uh, was coaching inside of my inner circle, which I do every week. And, um, and there was a girl who I could tell that I was coaching. She was, she was on the brink of tears. And I wanted to, to pull that out of her, not because I was trying to like shame her or embarrass her or, you know, use her as a teaching moment inside of the group. No, it's because I was honestly interested in, okay, as your coach, tell me why you're on the brink of tears. Tell me why, when you're talking about your business right now, does that bring you into this place of like, um, of great deep emotion? What's going on in your business that is causing that sort of friction within you? Because that's what we need to like, we need to really hone in on right now, because I, I want the best for you. I also want to bring out the best in you. I want to really drill down on what's bothering you about your current business. What is it that you're wanting? What is it you're needing? Whereas a consultant is going to do more like number analyzing, scalability, availability, sales. Does that make sense? A coach you could say is a little more touchy-feely, a little more mindset-y. And a consultant's going to be more strategy. And by the way, you need both. You need both. A good coach is going to motivate you. And a good coach will motivate you with something other than just sales. A good coach will motivate you in terms of what more income in your business can actually represent. A strategist, a consultant is actually going to be just probably more interested in the sales. That's what you're paying them for a lot of times. You're paying a consultant to get you more sales. But a coach is really going to help you uh, in, in terms of mindset and brainstorming and motivating to see a bigger picture. Most coaches focus a little more on mindset, which if you're in my inner circle, you know that I do. You know that I drill down really hard on, um, you know, hey, you've been talking for a while about starting that course. Why haven't you done that yet? Tell me what's going on inside of you that every time you go to start that course, you stop. Tell me what's happening that I can see you self-sabotaging right now. Tell me what's going on that it feels like you're doing some comparison and can, you know, you've got some imposter syndrome. Like that's what a coach is going to do. They're going to get more into the mindset behind the actual strategy. And, and here's what I will tell you about this. Um, I have a friend, uh, Shauna Oots. I'm just going to keep talking about Shauna until she starts. <laughs> I decided that today. This is the second podcast I've recorded today. And I also mentioned Shauna earlier today. I think I'm going to keep just calling out Shauna until she starts coaching some of us um, who, uh, like in fitness, she's in the area of fitness. Shauna will probably tell you, she's not sitting right here, so I, you know, can't speak for her, except I'm going to speak for her because she's my friend. Um, you know that 80% of your abs are built in the kitchen. You probably all heard that saying, right? 80% of your abs are built in the kitchen, which means that yes, when it comes to, you know, how you look, your general health, your weight, et cetera, um, 20% is what you eat, but 80%, no, 20% is what you do in the gym. 80% is what you eat. It's what's going on in the kitchen. When it comes to your business, 80% of your business, honestly, is what's going on between your ears. It really is. It is mindset. It is not a Facebook ad strategy. It's not setting up the perfect funnel. It's not making sure you have affiliate income coming in from Amazon. It's not that. So much of growing your business is growing your mind and growing into and becoming the person 
that can manage the business and grow the business to the next level. Does that make sense? And so when it comes to the difference between coaches and consultants, a coach is really going to focus on mindset stuff. They're going to focus on fear. They're going to focus on self-sabotage. They're going to focus on comparison, imposter syndrome. A consultant is probably going to do more strategy, more analyzing, more analytics. They're going to have answers. They're going to be measuring things. They're going to be looking at sales, metrics, et cetera. A coach should be someone who's listening a whole lot. Listening a whole lot. When I was uh, coaching that girl today who I knew was on the verge of tears, I kept hearing the Lord say, just, just hang on, just hang on, let, just let her keep talking. And then when I got to the point where I felt like I was supposed to, I asked her, do you know why you're close to tears right now? And it's interesting how, um, if any of you have ever like done any public speaking, let me just say this. Okay. This is weird. I'm going off on a rabbit trail. Just, just love me. Just love me where I'm at. So if you've ever done any public speaking, or if, if you're somebody who goes to church, I guarantee you ask your pastor this, or if you have somebody that prays for you on the regular, ask them this, but I'll do public speaking, right? I'll say something from stage. I'll say something in a podcast and somebody will come back to me and they'll say, oh my gosh, Jennifer, that ministered to me so much when you said X, Y, Z. And I won't even remember saying it. Like, I won't even remember saying it. Does that make sense? I'll be like, did I actually say that? that?" And so it's interesting what different people can get out of different things and different situations and scenarios. And so with that being said, like I asked her today, like, why why do you think, you know, that you're about to cry. And I think that sometimes like holding back as a coach and just letting someone kind of talk it out because people will flush out their own answers if you let them. Listen, if you're a coach listening to me right now, quit trying to think that you need to be the consultant and the strategist to your people. If they've hired you to coach, coach them to their own answers. You can give them consulting on what you think that they should do. And I do that often. But a good coach is going to ask a lot of questions and sit and let you do a lot of talking. And sometimes that's how people figure things out. Listen, how many of you are verbal processors? If you're a verbal processor, I want you to go to Instagram right now and um, take a screenshot of this podcast and uh, tag me on it because I see every one of those tags and just let me know I'm a verbal processor too. So if you're a verbal processor, you may have accused, you may be accused of talking too much. You may be accused of um, gossiping. You may be somebody that's been accused of, you know, um, don't know when to keep your mouth shut. You may be accused of um, just not knowing when to let something go. Those are all things that people say about people who are verbal processors, which is me. So when I'm verbal processing, I'm figuring it out after, as I talk it out. Literally, sometimes when I'm doing a podcast for you guys, it's coming to me as I speak because that's how my brain works. It's like when my tongue is wagging, my brain is firing. Does that make sense? Some of you have felt bad about being a talker your whole life. It's just because that's how you process. You process things out loud. And so since I know that that's how I'm wired, and I know so many other people are wired the same way, when as a coach, I say, so why do you think it is that you, you know, you've been talking about starting a course for the last year in my coaching group and you still haven't, and then I sit back and let them talk, it's so fascinating to me that they will figure out their own answers and later come back and tell me how much help I was to them. And I'll think to myself, I didn't help you at all. I just asked the right questions to get you started thinking about your own answers. See, that's what a coach is supposed to do. It's not supposed to be the one, two, three formula. Set up your Amazon account, set up your Instagram, do two IGTVs every week on Facebook. Make sure, I mean, yes, we give people a framework because a lot of people need a framework. They need to understand kind of the basics that they need to be doing in business. But a good coach is going to lead you to your own answers. Oh, that gets me fired up. It gets me fired up. One of the other big differences between coaching and consulting is a lot of times people are doing group coaching versus one-on-one coaching. Now, I have had a one-on-one coach. I've also been a part of group coaching. I have also done group coaching and I've done one-on-one coaching. I got to tell you, I gave up my one-on-one coaching. You may be wondering why. Okay, brace yourself. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And can I tell you why? Because I was trying to do one-on-one coaching when people were wanting me to do one-on-one consulting. 
They wanted me to give them the X, Y, Z answer for their business, but that's not how I'm wired. I'm wired for the mindset part. I'm wired to dig deep with you to figure out what is keeping you stuck, girlfriend. What is holding you back? Why every time does your business get to X amount of revenue, do you somehow self-sabotage? Why do you pause before you do a Facebook post that you know is going to bring income into your business? Why every time do you tell your sister-in-law about your business and she gives you that one sideways look and says that, you know, passive aggressive thing. Do you then shut down and you allow your business to slide backwards? That's my sweet spot. This is my secret sauce. And so when I was doing one-on-one coaching, people thought they were hiring me for one-on-one consulting. And you guys just sucked the very energy out of me. I am not a consultant. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I do. It's not what I do. And I found that I was caring more for some people's business than what they were their own businesses, if that makes sense. And I felt really responsible for the results of people. Listen, when you coach your, your hands off with responsibility. You've led people to their own answers. You have done what you can do to get them to reframe and see something from a different angle. You have given them advice. You've advised them. You've done a little bit of um, consulting, probably given them a little bit of strategy, probably. But the truth is you've coached them to their own things. And now it's up to them to do it. Da, 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 da. A consultant is different. Consultant is different. A consultant's going to give you strategy. It's going to be an X, Y, Z method. It's going to be more analytical. It's going to be more, how are we going to scale this thing? It's going to be more based on what they've seen work really well for other clients. Two totally different things. All of the coaching I do right now is group coaching. It's my inner circle, which I love, which I've had for five years next month, you guys, five years. And um, if you want to get an email about it when we're open next month, you can go to creatorsinnercircle.com. And before you say to yourself, well, I'm not a crafter. Girl, I'm not a crafter either. It's not for crafters. It's for creators. And creators, if you are creating anything on the internet, you're a creator. If you're creating an ebook on dog walking, you're a creator. If you're creating a course for marriages, you're a creator. If you are creating um, how to make earrings out of leather, you are creating something. So it's creatorsinnercircle.com. And you'll, um, we've got a public opening coming up soon, which we haven't been open since last September, you guys. Last September. So I'm getting super excited about it. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, a lot of coaches are going to do group coaching because they love the community piece, because they love um, that they can coach um, on a collective level versus a lot of one-offs. And therefore, the cost of coaching is often going to be much less than the cost of hiring a consultant. Not always. If you're hiring a one-on-one coach, the, the cost of that and a consultant may be similar. But group coaching is usually definitely less than consulting. So, of course, some coaches consult. And, of course, some consultants coach. And you can do both. And you can kind of decide, you know, um, what you need and what, and what you want to be to people. Um, But I just, I thought this would be super helpful, just giving you some of the differences between people. I think that people need a coach before they ever need a consultant. I think that they need to get past being their own worst enemies before they ever worry about somebody consulting them on bigger picture strategies. I think they need to figure out why they keep shooting themselves in the foot and keeping their business small before they ever worry about how to explode it. Does that make sense? Because the truth is, if you don't have the emotional and mental capacity to have business growth and your business explodes and you are not ready for it on an emotional level, you will somehow mess it up. It's kind of like, you know how people win the lottery and they win millions and millions of dollars and then they become bankrupt in a few years. So, uh, just from a, a numbers point, it's like 80% of all people who have won the lottery are bankrupt within five years or something. It's because they weren't prepared for it. They weren't prepared to be you, to go from one extreme to another. And so a good coach is going to help you at all levels so that you are leveling up mentally and emotionally and for a lot of you spiritually before you ever hit to what you're going to need consulted on. Does that make sense? I hope that that really makes sense. I'm going to give you just a recap um, from a previous episode about what you can look for if you're looking for a coach, by the way, real quick, okay? Number one, if you're looking for somebody to coach you, please look for somebody that's got some experience, please. 
I'm so glad for the people that hired me when I was brand new. But man, am I a better coach now, almost five years in. Look for somebody that's got some experience. Um, I also want you to look really close at, does the person you're considering coaching under, do they have the kind of life and the kind of results that you are looking for? So let me give you an example. I knew that I wanted to find a coach who made a lot of money and was able to give a lot of money. Those things are important to me. I wanted to make sure that I um, hired a coach who, um, you know, morally, we were really on a a similar page. It's important if you're going to go into a coaching group that they really have the results in their own life that you're hoping to have in yours. Not just they're talking about it, not just they've seen it happen for other people, not just that they, they've they only got experience in one way of doing it. That That's not what you're looking for. That's not what you're looking for. You need to make sure you're coaching with somebody who's living the kind of life that you hope to live someday. Maybe totally, you know, it could be totally different, but you know what I'm trying to say here. I have some times people ask me the question because they know that I'm a Christian. And how important is it to have a coach with the same, um, you know, religious beliefs as you? And you may not like the answer I'm about to give you, but I don't think it's important at all. I don't. I think it's important to coach with somebody who has the same moral compass as you. You know, even as a Christian woman, there's um, things that I read that are not Christian. And there's things that I watch that are not Christian. And there's things that I podcasts I listen to from people with completely different beliefs than me. And I am absolutely able to glean, um, nuggets and gold from people who think differently than me. So I don't think you have to have the same religion, but I do think you have to have the same moral compass. Now, why would you say that, Jen? Well, when it came for us like hiring a bookkeeper or us to hire somebody to do our taxes, it was important to me that we had somebody who was just morally on the same page as us, that I know is not going to stretch the boundaries, who I know is not going to, you know, encourage us to go into any gray areas that could land our buddy in a jail cell one day. I mean, that's important to me. It's important to just know I have the same moral compass as people that I'm working that closely with. So when it comes to coaching, find somebody who's got a moral compass similar to yours. Are they somebody who's career over everything or are they somebody who family is really important? Are they somebody who's like make as much money as you can get and stomp all over everybody on the way to get there? Or is it make a lot so you can give a lot? Like they're two totally different coaching styles. Does that make sense? So look for someone who has a similar moral alignment as what you do. Gosh, I hope that this was helpful. I hope it was really helpful. And I hope you're to a place in your business where you're not still thinking, I can't afford a coach. Girl, this is why I tell people all the time. It's like when they tell me you can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to. If you are trying to grow your business, find somebody who can help you get from A to B faster. Yes, you can do it on your own, but a good coach is going to help you go quicker. They're going to help you go quicker. They're going to pull stuff out of you. They're going to motivate you. They're going to call you out on some of your own BS because they love you and you will go faster from A to B. And it shouldn't just be that you're throwing money out the window every month for coaching. It should be that you're getting what you need um, from a mental perspective and strategy wise so that you can put things in place to be making that revenue back and then some. So again, if you're interested in my coaching when it comes up, you can go to creatorsinnercircle.com. And you'll get an email in the next few weeks. We would love to have you in there. Hope that this was so helpful. So last thing, real quick, want to let you know, I am on YouTube. I know you thought I was just on the Instagram and the Facebook, but no, no, we're on YouTube also. And my YouTube is growing like crazy, you guys. It's actually so, so fun. So we do put our podcasts onto YouTube. So if you like watching me, in addition to hearing me, which seems really weird, but okay. Um, Go over to YouTube, find Jennifer Allwood and hit the subscribe button there. And then we'll let you know every week when we have a new YouTube episode. So thanks for being here, guys. Until next week, stay creative. Bye-bye.